Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to Cambodia Global Dialogue. We had stopped for a while because I was traveling, I was too busy, but I think it's time now to restart uh, this program uh, in light uh, of uh, some global regional development and the most uh, relevant one is Cambodia now is in the ASEAN economic community. And at the same time, domestically, we, we also see a rise of uh, many young entrepreneurs striving to uh, build a business, to get integrated into the regional economy, that sort of thing. So I thought it would be nice to restart this program. And this year, I want to focus a lot more on how to uh, support, to give idea, creative uh, idea, innovation idea for our you know, entrepreneur, our young entrepreneur, so that they can succeed. Uh, you know, in building the business and ultimately helping the develop the Cambodian economy. Uh, I'm going to start uh, the show with uh, two good friends, uh, very senior, uh, who are very much uh, known in the Cambodian uh, business and economic community. Uh, my uh, brother, uh, Bang Kalyan, Dr. Mai Kalyan, uh, everyone knows already, he's uh, a, a retired uh, UN official, been in Cambodia for a while, I will let you say a bit uh, later on, and uh, Bong David Van, who is uh, very much uh, known in the private sector, uh, very influential in terms of uh, competitiveness thinking, you know, promoting private sector. So today we're just going to set the stage a bit on where do we see Cambodia is and uh, you know, what's the prospect for growth, what are some of the challenges. So Bong Kalyan, welcome, yes. uh, Bong David, welcome. So I'm, uh, we're going to start with the uh, macro <laughs> economic aspect of it, you know. I, I would say that uh, currently the global economy is not so like uh, doing so well, you know. We have uh, the, the Chinese economy is pretty much slowing down a bit. We have a lower commodity price. Then the latest one is the Brexit. All the signal, you know, is not giving... Uh, uh, a sort of like a, a, a optimistic prospect, but but I'm optimistic, right? Um, be, because in our part of the world, ASEAN, we're still doing well. Right? We're still doing well. Uh, but anyway, what what is your your take on first? Let's start on the larger picture. Okay, uh, I'm glad to be back again after years. We used to talk here with different setting, but now it's changing. I'm glad to see the new setting. And you start to say we like to emphasize on young entrepreneur and so on. I'm not that young. Uh -huh. I, but the, uh, I, you're I, the wiser. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could not advise on a young entrepreneur, but I think the role of the government is to set the stage, set the environment in which everyone could do their work. Okay. So I think in a big picture wise, I think uh, we are doing okay. Uh, you see, uh, seven percent over so many years. Two decades. Huh? Two decades, yes. yes. And they become um, lower middle income recently. When 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 was it announced? Uh, it was uh, about a month ago. About a month ago, yeah. in Sorry, July. Uh, July. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm not good at number. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> I think it was about. Lawyer number. also are not good at number. <laughs> yeah. So, we like to build, though. We like to build. <laughs> I'm, I'm more on a concept side. I think we are okay, uh, of course, uh, and then uh, we have to look forward. There's uh, so many things to do, but we have to feel that we have to celebrate among ourselves first, right? Because of so many people, effort, the government, private sectors, the people, everyone, work together, we come to this stage. We will come a long way. A long, the, long way. The Paris long Peace Accord yeah. of 93 will come That's a long right. way. Yeah. And still so many countries in the world, called LDC or developed countries, they are not even reach our level. So looking at our histories and our achievement, I think, okay, so far so good, but we should not sleep there. Yes. We have to move forward. Yes. Bon David, uh, what, what's your take from the private sector point of view? I mean, in terms, let's focus a bit, you know, on where we came from, mm -hmm. and then later on, second phase, we, we can look uh, what's the prospect in the future, what should... Uh, what are the various policy measures we have to do, that sort of thing. Yeah. In, in your last 20 years, what, what, what's your take well, on that? I would say the private sector in Cambodia, when I came back here, back in 88, 89, uh, was completely inexistent. But inexistent? Yes. Isn't, yeah. Doesn't exist? Doesn't uh, exist. Yeah. Because at that time, it was mainly uh, state-owned. 
yeah, mm-hmm. company that actually uh, ruled the uh, economic uh, scenario. But now it's been changing fast. Uh, we see, especially over the last uh, decade, uh, a lot of uh, thriving private sector activities, a lot more awareness uh, of entrepreneurship, especially among the uh, younger generation. Uh, it is good because that was a younger generation that has got the chance to be sent overseas for education, so yes. they got a lot more exposure. Uh, and when they come back, they are trying to apply what they have learned overseas. Yes. Uh, having said that, uh, we still have quite some way to go be- before we can really have a truly professional mm. uh, uh, SME environment. Yes, yes. So, so we come a long way. We we we, we rebuild from scratch. Uh, by now, we have a, a very thriving young entrepreneur, but still the base is still very small. Yes, right, uh, right. That's what you're saying, right? And the sophistication of the feel of their uh, involvement is also very shallow. Correct. Right? That, that's how I see. And more um, often, people uh, ask also, what are the reason behind all this growth, the seven percent? Right? I think this is a good question academically. And also. What's the answer? Um, I think broadly, uh, two or three points which are important. One is private sector. Yes. Yeah, private sector. Yes. This is one. And number two is stabilities. stabilities. Political stability. Yeah. Stabilities, political stabilities. No stabilities, nothing. Yes. Okay, we've gone through this war time, mm-hmm. so on. No stabilities, nothing. Yes. And number three, I think also important, is that Cambodia is located and very vibrant mm. region in the world, right? You see, you walk in, in Phnom Penh, you see Singapore, you see Thai, you see Malaysia, they got to invest yeah. in other countries. I used to travel in so many countries mm. in Africa, yeah. right? Tanzania or Zambia or Kenya, all these countries. Seldom, seldom you find investment from your neighbor, mm. okay? Either investment from Switzerland, from UK, from Holland, but really from the region itself. Yes, yes. In our case, it's different. You know, we have the people from Thailand, from other countries. Come. Yes. So we have dynamic regions. Yes. So in short, stabilities, dynamic regions, and private sectors, the emerging yeah. private sector, particularly the young one. Yes. I, I want to stress a uh, region. I want to focus a little bit more because, you know, ASEAN is, is comprised of, uh, you have the island country, you have the... The, the, the mainland country, if I, if I can right. use the word mainland, which in this case is the Greater Mekong subregion. Uh, so, uh, in this case, I would say that we are right in the heart of the, the continental Greater right. uh, region. Yeah. We, we, we are in between two, uh, three bigger markets here. Right. So, this is where I see the, right. the dynamics. Right. Um, but in, in, in uh, Bang David, in your view, the with the ASEAN Economic Community coming in, you see a lot of trade delegation coming from uh, the region, from right. Malaysia, from Thailand, from Vietnam, from Singapore. They're coming. I am not talking outside ASEAN yet. I'm just talking now about within ASEAN. What should take? Why? What is the interest in Cambodia? What entices them? What, what do they see in us? I guess when we talk about AEC, it means sort of freer flow of free services and, and so forth. Uh, so all the neighboring uh, uh, people, they are just coming to first to have a fact-finding mission and, and sort of sniff around and see what they think they could uh, tap into the so-called Cambodian potential yes. in order to uh, move forward this AEC uh, process. Uh, that is one part. But the most critical part is how are we uh, prepared? Uh, are we ready for that? Are we fully professionally uh, equipped in terms of skill in order to meet the expectation of uh, the neighborhood, so to speak? Uh, this is where the uh, critical part is. I think uh, we still need to build a much more professional uh, private sector SME uh, because all the while we are still very much informal. Mm. from the SME uh, uh, context. So there's a need to be much more uh, sophisticated in a sense in terms of corporate governance, in terms of uh, taxation, uh, uh, abiding by all these uh, changing uh, taxation system, 
uh, in terms of bookkeeping. Mm. Uh, this is how our neighbors would then evaluate us in terms of whether are we uh, worth being a local partner for them. Mm. So that is the most critical part in terms of uh, professionalizing further the uh, mm. as a music. We, we, here, here you are talking about uh, compliance. Yes, you know, uh, corporate compliance uh, and. You know the the big multinational they're very strict on compliance. Right. When they come to a country, they would insist that you know the company registration have to be in compliance before they even open shop, before they even start the business. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that uh, their staff uh, have the proper you know uh, labor permit, right. uh, immigration uh, documentation are proper. Uh, the tax ID, the VAT, all these things have to be in place. Uh, the, for example, the national, uh, what social security, right? With the mm -hmm. what you call national uh, NSSF. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So things like this. Uh, mm -hmm. So e even sometimes they don't have the the adequate uh, threshold met yet, which is like you you gotta have eight staff, right? But they require that we want to be ready. We want sure. to be proper, sure. you know. Sure. Uh, and I see that this is a good sign right. because it's sort of a benchmarking of it. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Benchmarking in the sense that you know what is the the corporate uh, mindset. How does this big company grow? Because ultimately, we want to motivate our young, growing entrepreneur to start thinking like a big company. Right, right. right? So it kind of also force us, in a sense, to lift ourselves up mm -hmm. to a more proper international norm. Right. Yes, right. Right. yes. Coming to do a global business. Yes, yes. But and I, and and the, the, okay, yeah, go ahead. If I might add to this uh, discussion, I mean, in a big picture. Yes, big picture. Big, yes, big, big sure. Picture, sure? I think in the big pictures, our economy is still depending on investment from our neighbor, FDI. Yes. They produce in Cambodia and then they export to USA or to Europe market. So yes. The standard issue is all linked when it comes to, 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 mm -hmm. to the marketing. So it's all linked. It's not only about well, our neighbor come to invest and then they buy back to China, they buy back to Japan. No. They come to invest in Cambodia and then they assemble again, and then they export to USA or yes. to Europe. So the problem of linkage with the standard, you know, with the good governance, so on and so forth, I think it's a, it's a, it's a must. It's yes, a must yes. Country. So it's a big picture yes. way. They invest from neighboring country to Cambodia and then export. To yes. So it's, it naturally it's linked, naturally. So, I mean, that's probably why, you know, I think it's 12 years ago, 12 years ago, that when Cambodia, you know, joined the WTO, it was 12 years ago. I can't believe it. It was that long. But you know, in the context of that time, it was exactly what you said, is that, you know, we don't have a large market to justify investment to serve the local market. We need a third country market. And that's why, uh, some like uh, De Cho Hun San, he was very, very clear that we have to join the WTO mm -hmm. to secure, to have this predictability of a third country market, which is the US or, you know, uh, the EU and Japan, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So, so I think you're right. Uh, you, you have a market driven mm -hmm. force, right. which is, you know, uh, driven externally, but you also have the domestic uh, force also. And here I'm talking about, you know, how young entrepreneur, uh, Sometimes they have a lot of problem to say, oh, but Bong, brother, how can we compete with the, the, the big guy or at least the medium-sized company from Thailand, from Malaysia? I say, look, uh, there are time to compete, there are time to collaborate. Right. Right. But to collaborate, they want to uh, see in you a worthy partner mm. that they can collaborate with. Mm. And this is where you step in with this corporate compliance, you know, uh, checking, uh, have you paid your tax, uh, have you done the proper, you know, uh, joint venture, for example, you know, who's as your shareholder, uh, do you have proper uh, governance documentation, that sort of thing. So I, th I think we, 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 we are, you know, uh, we're learning along the way. So I think we're going to take a break now, and then uh, we come back and we move to the second phase. Thanks. Uh, I think we, we have a good picture on where we stand, uh, the macroeconomic aspect-wise. I want to focus more on the 
micro dimension, which is more on the competitiveness of uh, you know the the, the uh, enterprise uh, industry, you know, and our nation. Because it, let's face it, people always say, "Well, Cambodia compete with Thailand." Yeah, but at the end, it's not the country that compete. There are segment of the the country that compete. Individual enterprise, there. individual enterprise, and industry in itself right. are competing. Where do you see, you know, uh, in terms of our competitiveness vis-à-vis, -vis, you know, our neighbor, for example? Right. Well, uh, it is obvious that we are squeezed in between two economic giants. Right? Uh, that's the fact. We can't change. We can't move geographically, so we are stuck there. Uh, so the best sort of uh, uh, alternative in order to so-called compete with our much better equipped uh, larger size larger size neighbor is we should not go about competing heads on uh, in the same domain yes. and that because we will be beaten up flat yes right away yeah we should be a lot more creative in finding ourselves specific niche in terms of services mm -hmm. or in terms of products okay. where we think Cambodia, despite its small size, may play mm -hmm. uh, uh, a better role, may have a better edge uh, uh, in this particular uh, area. So I think this is the uh, sort of uh, uh, principle or mm -hmm. policy or thinking that we should actually go along when yeah. it comes to competing but, with uh, our neighbors. Yeah, I, I agree to a certain extent. But being in the ASEAN economic community, we talk a lot about, you know, uh, ASEAN production, right. uh, ASEAN product, production lines, uh, global supply chain, you know. Uh, and Cambodia is in between two large markets here. Uh, where do you see Cambodia positioning in terms of getting a piece of the supply chain, for example? Uh, we definitely can play a role uh, along this uh, whole value chain. Yes. Uh, we don't have to have actually a uh, big factory that assemble, for instance, entire motor vehicle yes. in Cambodia. Uh, yes. that's, that's quite impossible uh, at the moment. Yes. But we can certainly be a part of the value chain uh, because today you have very fragmented, uh, decentralized uh, assembly for motor vehicles or even for electronics. Yes. Uh, uh, it is obvious that if we can play a part in having assembly of specific spare part hmm. that goes into assemble an entire motor vehicle, yes. uh, this is where we should uh, start with. But speaking of uh, assembly, car, you know, motorcycle, I see a very important role of the Japanese industrialists. Right. Uh, you work, you live in Japan for a long time, uh, and you do now have a lot of interaction with the Japanese industrialists. <laughs> What do you see, you know, in uh, in in the Japanese prospect for Cambodia? I yes, you are right. I was in Japan, and then now I'm also in close contact with a Japanese investor, with a big big investor. For some reason, they always they find it easy to talk to me yes. in Japanese. So because yes. you, you you speak Japanese, right? I speak Japanese. So Arigato gozaimasu. Gozaimas. So most Japanese do not speak English, so they yes. feel comfortable. They yes. pay me one breakfast, and then we talk a lot about yes. this. That's I, a that's some. You have to charge them more. Uh, no, I it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the point I I could summarize in a few things: um, we are connecting in factory Asia. Okay. Right. We are not building cars here. We're not building refrigerator here. Mm. We are a small part of the whole system here. I do not say the name, but there's so many companies in, in Cambodia, from Japan, but they start to go to Thailand first, mm. and then they come here. Why they come here? Because they have comparative advantage in terms of various things, yes. including labor, yeah. okay? so they come. But we are only doing part of the thing, not, not the overall system. Yes. But at the same time, I see the dynamic, mm. dynamic of All it. Right. They say, that, okay, now you do this, very, very labor intensive. And then if you have a bit more technology, mm. if you have a, your energy is a bit cheaper, mm. we okay. add this. Okay. It, it's a, it's a dynamic, dynamic, dynamic process. We, government, we could... It's a lot of if though, what you just said. Yeah, yeah a lot of if. If the electricity rate yeah. is lower. If it's lower, and if there's a market also, yeah. it's a market. I you mean domestic market? Uh, 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 oh, outside, outside market. market. Okay. For example, give you an example. This, uh, 
they try to do something related to smartphone. Okay. Smartphone. There's a screen of smartphone. And they said they could not do it in Cambodia. They okay. prepared. But the market in China is not good. Okay. So they had to slow down. Oh, right. There's so, so many if. It's not something that you build, oh, hey, my factory, and then I, I mm. do everything. No. They respond to the need of the market. They are very sensitive to the need of the market. Yes. So I think it's exactly what's happening in Cambodia now. It's industries go step by step and responding to our improvement in, in energy, mm -hmm. in our scale, it goes step by step. You, you, uh, the thing I love about this uh, spontaneous dialogue is that one thing leads to the other and you don't know when. But you did mention uh, China. Uh, it's clear that uh, Japan, you know, production has a lot to do with servicing mm -hmm. the larger, the one billion plus uh, Chinese market. But I see for Cambodia, I see a inward flow of a uh, Chinese interest, mm -hmm. you know, into the country also. Right. Uh, I mean, what 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 you know about that? Uh, I don't. I'm not quite privy to all these uh, Chinese FDI figures, yes. but uh, based on what has been reported in the media, Chinese FDI has been quite a substantial uh, number, and also in in the lead sector. Uh, Mostly in major infrastructure, though. Right, right. Uh, but this is also a uh, uh, sort of political component of the Chinese FDI. Okay. Uh, but having said that, uh, the thing is, do we uh, try to go one step further mm. in uh, expressing our view to? The Chinese that look it's good that you help us build road, mm. uh, build bridges and so forth, but uh, it is still somehow not uh, quite uh, how should I say uh, appreciated by the public in mm. general. Okay, uh, what the public may uh, really appreciate is if the Chinese uh, it, uh, could be a bit more diverted towards building more capacity ah, for okay. the Cambodian yes, workforce. Yes, yes, yes. Then okay. this is where really yes. the public would appreciate that yes. sort of uh, There's assistance. more sustainability Correct. to it. Yes, Correct. yes. Yeah. But you know, I, I, I want to uh, link a bit this uh, sort of like uh, the geopolitical dimension a bit, how Cambodia, you know, being in between Vietnam and Thailand and Japan, it's the same mm. as China, have this also this Thailand plus one policy also, you know, uh, I, I don't think in the near future we will have uh, the Toyota or the, you know, Mazda relocating the whole plan to mm. Cambodia, but we will have, uh, we continue to have some component to supply there. Mm. Uh, and I think it's important that uh, in the context of us wanting to have a piece of this uh, uh, regional supply chain, right. We, we have to start thinking of what is our industrial development policy, you know, what is our, uh, so like the skill labor policy, because certain thing, you cannot just bring somebody from the countryside right. and put them in a factory, yeah. you know, uh, what are the forward or backward linkage to link up with the, the, the big uh, right. manufacturer, for example. Uh, uh, you, you and I have worked quite a bit a few years ago on uh, the industrial policy and last year uh, like Dr. Hun Sen have launched uh, officially the industrial policy. What, what's, uh, what's happening now? I think that one is set the direction in the right way but if you come back to a, a basic uh, comparison it is like you compare weather and climate. Okay. Weather is short term and climate is long term. I never know that. <laughs> weather, what's weather today? Oh, what's the weather? Okay. Today, right? But not, right. not the climate today, right? Yes, yes. The climate change over time. But weather could be up, down like this. Yes. But climate over time, if you do messy thing, become worse. Yes, okay? yes. Yeah. So it's a long term thing. There's a trend. Trend, a trend the, for 30 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. I tend to look at climate, not so much on the weather. On the weather, okay. So from that. So what's the climate? <laughs> Uh, the weather, uh, the climate, yeah. yeah. From that perspective, what we could do, I mean, things changing all the world to place because we are well connected to the world mm -hmm. and our economy very, uh, now the uh, import plus export more than GDP, mm -hmm. right? meaning they are very connected to the world. So what mm -hmm. happened, whatever happened in the world will be affected. Yeah. Right? However, 
what we could do, what we could do, we had to improve ourselves. Yeah. We had to improve ourselves, right? In terms of infrastructures, hmm. in terms of uh, regulation, trade facilitation, yes. in terms of skill, hmm. in terms of energy, human resources, all the basic things that we said in uh, the IDP. In yes, the industrial yeah. development policy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now it is time for implementation. The, 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 the task is big, right? mm. but one has to, to look at sectoral thing. This bit, this bit, this bit, this bit. The, the idea, I think today is correct. We, we, we work on that. I think we are in the in, 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 in right direction, but the problem in Cambodia normally it takes time to, yeah. to implement things. But luckily, for example, last week I attended a meeting on uh, on connectivities, yes. on, uh, on on logistics. Yes. Right? So one has to be charged of, of something. Okay? Mm. So we just could not expect oh China like this or Japan like this, but we have to improve ourselves step yes. by step, right? That and mm. that link to the the competitiveness of the industry right. of the company, because what you said is about. How to make, uh, how to look at the competitiveness of a nation, oh, sure, right? Sure. But you know, you got to bring the the real actor, which is the industry, yeah. and 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 the company itself. Uh, well, competitiveness is actually ruled by uh, uh, many factors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Interlink. Uh, it has to do with the cost of production. It has to do with the infrastructure, how effective it is. It has to do to the uh, cost of logistic, how efficient and how fast and how cheap. Uh, it also has to do with the skill, manpower, because if we were to attract specific uh, FDI for a specific industry, uh, do we have that particular skill, manpower to cater to the expectation raised by the investors? And we all know that uh, within the skills uh, issue, uh, the big component, the missing link, is a more strengthened uh, vocational training aspect. Okay. Right. Uh, Today you have several companies within specific sector that already do uh, in-house in training. They already provide a uh, certificate, but it's still pretty much uh, fragmented and, and in-house according to individual enterprises. Yes. Uh, but the program they're doing is still very good. They mm -hmm. churn out very competent and duly certified uh, skill manpower. Uh, what needs to be done bringing forward this is Perhaps the government should uh, encourage and give more support by having a national uh, sort of a certification body that would mm -hmm. then endorse on a national level all this uh, vocational but training. But don't, don't we have already a, a very clear policy on the vocational training? No, uh, we certainly do have a policy, but uh, from what I understand from the latest Eurocham white paper okay. report is that there seems not yet to be a uh, national level kind of a mm -hmm. true certification endorsement of mm -hmm. what commercial enterprise has been okay. doing at that level. Okay, okay. But I'd like to add from a positive side. Okay, okay. okay. I think since we come back home a few years back, you know, we're talking about, okay, skill problems, skills, 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 skills. Right? Yes. Now, all the time, Everybody put their head on skill issue. Yeah, right? yeah. So there's consensus about the importance to stand in the skill. Mm, mm. I think the skill thing is not that overnight, right? Yes. But everybody talking about right. it. But uh, everybody doing about it? Uh, one way or another. Okay. They do something. Okay. But to the point that you are satisfied or not is another issue. Yes. Okay. But people talking about it, people agree on that. Miss smart skill, miss smart and so on. Even my university we are gearing toward more technology so and so forth. Mm. But about skill training, I do not know about the uh, national national wide uh, yeah. certificate, but if the Japanese style for example, they do inner job training. Mm -hmm. If you go to there to see the factory, they have a, a nice dormitories. Mm. I was invited to see the classroom in the factories mm. to do even how to clean your nail, mm. right? Mm. How to clean your body, so very basic thing, right? So after that, they bring some, a good one, to be trained in other factories like in Thailand and mm. Vietnam, right? Yes. So there's a lot of internal exchange. So I think the government policies now we are considering to give incentive hmm. to those co to those company to those factory who who take care of the people yeah who take care of the training itself right yes 
So nationwide is one thing, but another one is each factory has to take care of their own people for their own long-term development. Yeah. And, and, and I think this is where policy uh, support come to play. You know, how do we uh, come up with uh, incentive, mm -hmm. you know, fiscal and non-fiscal mm -hmm. incentive mm -hmm. so that uh, companies see the benefit, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because ultimately, uh, it, it, you know, you do whatever you can, right, within the confines of your own factory, mm -hmm. but if you have external stimulus from the government, then you see you now, this is systemic, I should do it. Sure. Anyway, we, we, we're going to stop for now and then uh, we, we start a bit later. Okay. Well, I think, you know, we have a, a macro picture already of where the country stand. We have some idea already as to uh, where do we stand on competitiveness uh, of the nation, competitiveness of the industry, competitiveness of the enterprise level. Moving forward, imagine five years down the road. What do we have to do, you know, uh, to be competitive, right, at all three levels? Perhaps well, maybe uh -huh. you want to start a bit on the policy side uh -huh. of it. What sort of policy intervention, you know, Cambodia government should be thinking? Uh, for detail one, I will elaborate later, but I'd like to focus on a few kind of big picture things. Yes. I think they really talk a lot about competitiveness, which is one of my topic. I think overall what we target in the coming five to ten years, for me it's four things economically. One, we need stabilities politically, socially, economically. Yes. Stabilities meaning that, uh, for example, do not talk about politics, talk about economic only. Financial system have to be well managed. Okay. Have to be managed. Yeah. Without stabilities, financial system. Monetary policy. Monetary policy. Fiscal policy. Fiscal policy. So microeconomic stabilities must be there. It's like a roof of the house. Yes. Right? Without a roof, you cannot do anything. So sometimes we tend to forget. We talk about the. Uh, attacking side only, eh? like yes. right, build this, build this, build this, but defending side also very important. Right? So, for example, credit issue, banking issue, uh, monetary issue should be correct. This is one thing. I have four. Uh, number two, competitiveness. I will ask uh, David to elaborate on that and competitiveness. Whatever we could compete, it's linked to many factors. But the third thing I have, have we discussed also, we need to focus on uh, diversification. Diversifications. Okay. Yeah, because we could not continue to do garment, garment, yes. garment all the yes. time, right? We had to step up one ladder higher to increase value added. And number four, maybe some uh, thing that's supporting everything here is about human and yeah. about uh, skill, about the people. Human resource development. Human resource development. Because this human resources development, it is good to support these three that I'm mentioned about, and at the same time we help them, mm. right? Because our countries, as you know, yes. so many young people. Right? Yes. So we had to focus on the four things that I mentioned to move forward. Well, where is the role of uh, education policy here? I think I do not because you, you because you mentioned about diversification, which is very important. Yeah. Ultimately, we we don't want to be the sweatshop of the world. Mm -hmm. We've been doing that for the last one year. Mm -hmm. We have to move up the, the 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 value chain. We have to move up the the quality chain. But it requires science. Right. right. It required you know technological right. uh, advancement. Right. And I think education policy is is. Right. In uh, to push the STEM, right? right, right. The what science, technology, uh, engineering. engineering, and math, right? Uh, these are important yeah. because you are also the the chairman of the board yeah. of the Royal University of Phnom Penh. Right. I mean, that's right. Okay, I will ask the Minister of Education <laughs> later on in one the show there, but perhaps yeah, from could, your school, have yeah. you done something about that? I could share quickly that uh, yes, to go up diversification from only government to other things depends on so many factors. But the main one is whether the investor yeah, see the potential to do this or not. And at the same time, this is demand side yeah. and supply side. We have to promote, we have to prepare our people, young people, to, to prepare for this kind of thing. Yes. You could not have an engineering a factory without engineer. Right? Yeah, yeah. Without an engineer. So at our Royal University of Phnom Penh, we do a lot of work on this, too, in terms of 
redirect our mm. emphasis. Okay. And then uh, we, we we put a lot of uh, emphasis on on laboratory, yes. on science and technologies, mm. bit by bit. But at the same time, more importantly, we link we link university with the private sector. Yes. Before I produce my graduate. Let up, let up, up to them to find a job, right? Mm -hmm. But now we prepare. We invite the private sectors to come to have discussion with us. What do you need? What okay. kind of uh, people you you want? Right? Yeah. Can you suggest your curriculum? Yes. And sometimes we do not have enough laboratories. Okay. Right? okay. So what we do, we ask them, mm. could our student go to use your laboratory? Yes. Right? Okay. Right? All right. And then so they have a private sector partnership. Yeah, right? partnership. Good. Yeah. And, and 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 reality in real terms. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Real term. Well, a bit more on the uh, industry and uh, and price competitiveness. Maybe uh, I'm looking back at the uh, government uh, industrial development policy, and I was wondering myself uh, many times that uh, have we ever conducted a particular survey by a specialized business practitioner uh, to actually find out what is. Cambodia competitive advantage. Mm. Uh, I see the, the IDP that Cambodia would look at developing this sector or that sector, but are we actually very sure that this is our real competitive advantage, mm. or do we just think that maybe we should do uh, improve the sector, maybe we should improve that sector? No. Mm. Uh, to me personally, so I'm more, not more very focus, clear yet. Uh, se sector. At that level, right? right. Not because, just sector. Uh, the people talk of competitive advantage, yes. but that is already outlived. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I agree. Now, I agree. nowadays, is where do you stand and how you competitive are you? Mm. Is the competitive advantage? So, given the Cambodian context, given our uh, say certain constraints, mm. uh, where do we really stand in terms of our own competitive advantage? And this is when we know very sure this is where we really uh, focus in all the artillery yeah. right, so mm -hmm. to speak to in order to really uh, boost the uh, capacity for that particular uh, yeah. sector or industry. If I may add to this because I still remember a discussion when preparing IDP industrial reform policies a few years back we talked about this and the IDP is not kind of end product yet mm -hmm. it's a only kind of blueprint uh, under which uh, people have to work on this. I think the government has asked CDC yes. uh, to, to follow up on this. And then kind of a broad base. And then what is important, I remember in the, in the IDP discussion, yes. is that we're going to have advisory committees mm -hmm. consists of the government, private sectors, and academia, mm -hmm. three, met, not three people, but three group of three people group. work together on practical issue, mm. right? That's implementation. Yes. Right? Right. So I think your issue, your, 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 your issue raised is related to implementation. I think it is true. We, we do not do all the study yet, right. very detailed. Right? Yeah. But when implementation, you have to have a, 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 a committees right, to help guide, right? Sometimes the private sector might come, okay, I want to do this here, but the government, please do this, 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 this right? It's a kind of interactive mm. but kind of discussion. Yes, right. So that way, we could go deeper and deeper and deeper, but I'm not sure how far we are now. I'm not sure because I'm retired. <laughs> Good. Well, anyway, we, we're almost running uh, out of time, but I want to project a bit uh, the challenge of uh, the future because you mentioned that uh, Cambodia have now reached the, according to the World Bank, the low, low middle income, mm -hmm. right? But according to the UN uh, sorry, nomenclature, we still consider as a least developed country mm -hmm. and therefore all the, the preference, the trade preference mm -hmm. that are linked like for, for example the everything but arm initiative, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so these are the initiatives that we benefit, right? Uh, but at some point, four or five years down the road, we will graduate, mm -hmm. right? So uh, that easy preference mm -hmm. will force us you know, to be more competitive because we right. will not have mm -hmm. that same trade preference as of now. Mm -hmm. Uh, last word, well, maybe start with yeah, you. I start with first. I think it is, uh, it is, uh, it's coming. 
Yeah. It's just a matter of time. Yes. Whether three years or five years, mm -hmm. people debate. But I, I do not debate about details. Yes. I debate about. It's about that. It's, it's about that. that. It's com com coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. So it's a good a signal to our government to all of us. Yeah. Okay. The real thing is coming. Before we are poor economy, we are this, we are that. The you know, they, they give us a lot of benefits, right? Yeah. But from now on, we have to be able to live with confidence, with pride of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the reduction of ODA will be coming, mm -hmm. is for sure, right? Yeah. But when I look at the number, it's about 2-3% of our GDP. Okay. So the government could collect more money to so, to, to replace this. But important, if we, we change, we have to change the mentalities, that we have to stand on our own, not so much depend on the kind of uh, uh, good willing of yes. other people. Yes. Good. Margaret? You know, today Cambodia, among every sea, we are big fish in a mm -hmm. small pond. Big fish in a small pond. Tomorrow, okay. when we graduate, we'll be, in a, be small a small fish, fish in, a in a big, big pond. pond. Okay. And the that, big pond is metaphor. full of sharks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, agree. the key to survival for Cambodia as a small fish in a big pond full of sharks is we need to enhance our speed, survival instinct, and yes. our speed yes. to yeah. swim faster. Yeah. If not, the big fish will eat you, right? Mm -hmm. In the old days, they say the big fish will eat the small fish. Yes. In this globalized, fast-moving, dynamic world, you know, not necessary that the big fish will eat the small the fish. Small fish. If the small fish could survive, it is swim and faster. faster. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So all right. So I, I, I think we it, maybe I can just uh, summarize a bit, you know, uh, what we discussed, and then you can add on as a final uh, message. Uh, I think we come a long way you know, as an economy from the peace process, 20 years some, stable economic growth. Uh, we do still have some challenge uh, as we are now in this, uh, you know, very integrated in the ASEAN economic community, competitiveness matter. Uh, there's, uh, there's also the prospect that this uh, competitiveness will be uh, affected in the future as we graduate at some point you know, from the least development uh, uh, status, least development uh, status. And here is the importance of uh, looking at the competitiveness at all three levels, at the nation, national level, at the industrial industry level, and at the enterprise level. Uh, your last word. Um, we are happy to be uh, lower middle income, but it's only $1,000 per head. So to go to the, another step is 12,000, is 12 times of now, right? So we are happy, we have to be happy, but just remind that we have so many work to do, so many work to do in futures, everyone. Yes. I think the work to do, I repeat what I said, four points. We need to maintain stability, mm -hmm. whatever it is, competitiveness, diversification, yes and human resources. I think the two things we have to focus. Thank you. Well, uh, I would say we can be also very bold in our yeah. vision. Uh, yeah. There's no uh, sort of necessity to just uh, remain as the traditional, we can only grow at say 5, 6, 7 percent per yeah. annum. We can actually also grow 10, 12 percent per annum if we are much bolder in our economic vision, okay. in our strategic vision. Okay. Uh, same as uh, the uh, Asian tigers have done uh, decades ago when they really grow up the economy, you know, the leapfrog. That will be the next topic, very focused on competitiveness and how do we get to uh, secure a 10 or 12 percent growth. So, Bob, well, uh, thank you very much, Olivier, thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh, you know, it's nice to have you back and it's, high, and it's very nice to restart this program. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. So, Agency, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching our show and uh, I look forward to have a more interesting uh, dialogue on a more broader subject, more uh, sort of like focused subject in the future. Good night.